the power collapse happening in Texas right now is merely a short preview of the total collapse of the United States. America's infrastructure is getting obsolete and starting to crumble. Our power grid wasn't designed to support so many people. Our water systems are a complete failure. And this event has made it clear that we would be entirely lost if a major long-term national emergency ever occurred. Texas is one of the richest states of the nation, and it also has vast energy resources, but its inefficiency and lack of preparation to handle this crisis has outlined how vulnerable the energy system in the state really is. And if it can't even handle a few days of cold weather, what's going to happen to this country when things actually start to get turbulent in the months ahead? That's what we're going to discuss today. So stay with us and don't forget to leave a thumbs up and share this video. And please subscribe to our channel to keep updated with the U.S. economic collapse the stock market frenzy, the housing market bubble, and much more. The chaos brought on by freezing temperatures has underlined how the power grid in Texas is more fragile than anyone ever imagined. When the chill wave hit the state, demand for energy soared to unprecedented levels. But on the other hand, Nearly half of the wind turbines that the state relies upon completely froze, and the rest of the system simply wasn't able to meet the enormous increase in demand. Approximately 15 million Texan homes were affected, and hundreds of thousands of them remain without power right now. However, the situation could have been much worse if grid operators hadn't cut the power immediately after they realized something was going terribly wrong with the system. In a recent report, officials with the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, which operates the power grid that covers most of the state, disclosed that when millions of homes throughout the state started to have power restored after days of power outages, Texas was critically close to entering a state of calamity and having uncontrolled blackouts all across the state. Texas's power grid was seconds and minutes away from a catastrophic failure that could have left Texans in the dark for months, officials said this Thursday. Coal plants, utility-scale wind power, and natural gas-fired plants all went offline due to the icy temperatures resultant from the relentless winter storm. Consequently, the amount of power supplied to the grid to be distributed across the state considerably dropped. But in the meantime, demand never stopped surging as consumers and businesses turned up their heat and stayed indoors seeking protection from the ravaging weather. It needed to be addressed immediately, said Bill Magnus, president of ERCOT. It was seconds and minutes from possible failure, given the amount of generation that was coming off the system. Then, grid operators noticed the system was overwhelmed and could collapse at any moment, so they had to act quickly to cut the amount of power distributed. Magnus told in an interview, he said if they had waited, then what happened in the next minute might be that three more power generation units come offline and then you sunk. Magnus stressed that if operators had not promptly acted, Texas could have suffered blackouts that could have occurred for months and would leave the state in an indeterminately long crisis. According to Bernadette Johnson, the senior vice president of power and renewables at Enverus, and a longtime expert in the industry, Texas was right on the verge of facing the worst case scenario which is when demand for power outstrips the supply of power generation available on the grid, causing equipment to catch fire, substations to blow, and power lines to go down. If the grid hadn't gone totally offline, 
the amount of physical damage caused in the power infrastructure from overwhelming the grid could have taken months to repair, said the spokesperson of an oil and gas software and information company headquartered in Austin. This means that after being faced with a black swan event, Texas's power generation system dramatically crashed. It was severely distressed, and it simply couldn't handle it, so it almost imploded. The cost of this collapse has been the loss of several lives and billions of dollars in economic damage. However, Texas's struggles are only foreshadowing the many problems that have been building up in America for several years. Last summer, California experienced rolling blackouts as electrical providers were also unprepared for a sudden surge in demand after a heat wave struck. But the problem is much bigger than that. What most Americans fail to realize is that most part of the rest of the world has a better and more efficient power infrastructure than we do. We are dramatically trailing competing nations as our electrical reliability has been declining for decades. For example, in Japan, the average home only experiences four minutes of power outages a year. In contrast, in the U.S. Midwest, that number escalates to 92 minutes a year, while in the Northeast, it's 214 minutes. These figures represent only regular outages and not those caused by extreme weather or fires. America is literally falling apart all around us, and as our population has grown and our infrastructure has aged, our performance has been decaying with each passing year. According to analysis by Climate Central, from the mid-1980s to 2012, major outages became 10 times more frequent. From 2003 to 2012, weather-related outages more than doubled. The American Society of Civil Engineers reported that in 2015, there were 3,571 total outages, lasting at least 49 minutes each. The U.S. Energy Administration unveiled that in 2016, the average utility customer had 1.3 power interruptions and their total blackout time averaged four hours. Just as problematic as the energy system, our water systems are also very fragile, which is even more worrying because in addition to being essential for our survival, when there's a problem with the water system, Oftentimes, our water reservoirs are vulnerable to contamination, which can collectively impact our health. In Texas, the cold weather caused thousands of pipes to burst, and at least 13.5 million people are facing water disruptions. As 797 water systems throughout the state reported issues such as frozen or broken pipes, and that's according to Toby Baker, the executive director for the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. To make matters even worse, access to fresh drinking water is also becoming increasingly scarce in Texas, with roughly 725 systems under a boil water advisory, Baker revealed during a press conference Thursday. As a result, state officials have placed more than 7 million people across Arlington, Austin, Houston, and San Antonio, that's a quarter of Texas's entire population, under orders to boil tap water before drinking it. Additionally, almost 263,000 people have no water at all. As water providers stop functioning, and thousands more are dealing with burst water pipes at their own homes. Officials say it could take months for service to fully return to normal. Moreover, around 22 million people across hard-hit southern states are under a hard freeze warning, which indicates that temperatures will be so cold it could result in further water line failures. In Houston, despite the boil water advisory, thousands remain without power to do so in Harris County. They're having to make the desperate choice between going thirsty or facing possible illness. At some spots in Houston, in scenes typically seen in a third world country, 
Local residents are resorting to filling up buckets of water from a spigot in the local neighborhood. One of them, whose power's just gone back on Thursday after three days but still has no water, told in an interview with the Daily Mail, it is crazy, we've just watched NASA land on Mars, but here in Houston, most of us still don't have drinking water. Shortages of food and other essential supplies are also being reported in Texas. Grocery stores are already unable to get shipments of dairy products. Store shelves are already empty, alerted Sid Miller, the Texas Agriculture Commissioner. He exclaimed, we're looking at a food supply chain problem like we've never seen before, even with the health crisis. HEB, a major Texas grocery chain, has over 400 stores across Texas and Mexico, disclosed that the unprecedented weather event in Texas has caused a severe disruption to its supply chain and even forced 10 of its stores to shut their doors. Like many other Texans they're experiencing, this disruption is complicated by power and water outages. For HEB, this means temporary impacts to manufacturing, warehousing, store operations, and the daily lives of employees and their families, the company stated. In addition to the current challenges grocery stores are now facing, the cold weather could potentially cause huge damage to the state's agricultural sector. For that reason, officials have warned that the storm could hamper food access for many weeks to come. At the moment, extremely long lines have been forming at local supermarkets all over the state. Some residents have affirmed to be waiting in line for hours long before the stores actually open. That's the case of Joe Giovanali, 29, who arrived at a Central Market supermarket in Austin at 8.30 a.m. Thursday, an hour and a half before it opened, as he uncovered in an interview with USA Today. Giovanali said he wasn't the only one. Minutes later, over 200 people had lined up behind him outside the store in the 26-degree weather. The report described that Giovanali's wife was three months pregnant and the power in their one-bedroom Austin apartment was out and it has been out since Tuesday night. The resident said that after a water pipe burst, firefighters also turned off the building's water. Giovanoli said he realized he's still in a better position than many others across Texas, but he worries about how long things will take to get back to normal. Unfortunately, when the store opened its doors, a manager came out and told those waiting in line that supplies inside were running out. There was no produce, no baked goods, not much canned food. We haven't had a delivery in four days, he said. A local businessman named Jim McInvale, but known as Mattress Mac, tried to get food to help around 500 Texans who sheltered in his store. In 2017, when Hurricane Harvey struck the city, McInvale also sheltered locals who seek protection. But this time around, he said people were much more emotionally distraught. Their lives have been totally disrupted by this terrible power outage and water shortage, so it's a terrible situation, he said. Meanwhile, several county officials across Texas revealed to be coming up with strategies to feed and to bring water to those devastated by the storm. The Harris County Executive Lena Hidalgo said she's tremendously worried about the lack of drinkable water in her community, saying county officials have been scouring warehouses for water supplies and emergency response officials will be working to bring water to hospitals and homes well after temperatures warm and lights turn on in homes, she said. It's not just a weather emergency, Hidalgo said. This is a multifaceted disaster. In short, the power shortage has broadened to the point it triggered food, water, and health crises. When we take into account the amount of damage registered in just a few days and the lack of preparation of our authorities to promptly mitigate the crisis, we wonder what would happen to us if a steep long-term national emergency disrupted food, water, and power systems for months. This time, 
all it took to spark so much turmoil and result in a domino effect of outages and shortages was a cold wave. Needless to say, eventually, much worse troubles will unfold in our nation. But it has become clear that we are not ready to handle our issues. So you should get prepared while you still can. Because, quite honestly, time is running out. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy Michael Snyder's latest book, Lost Prophecies on the Future of America. It's now available at Amazon. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section down below, and please don't forget to turn on the bell to always get our latest notifications. See you guys on the next one.